G'day guys, Holy Critic here, signing in, and today I'm super excited to bring you my very first tutorial video on how to restore old movies. Now, I fielded a lot of questions from you guys regarding this very topic for quite some time now, so what I've decided to do today in this video is detail the complete process I follow from recording all the way up to final edit so that hopefully you guys at home can get some insights into what exactly I do. Now, I may get technical in parts during this video, but it's quite easy to learn and I got there through trial and error. And I honestly believe that if you follow along at home and by all means pause it, rewind, fast forward, whatever you wanna do at your own pace, you can also do exactly what I'm doing. And if you think about it like this, Right now, there could be an old VHS tape sitting in your garage or your attic that has never been seen online before, and that right now you could go there and follow this video and bring the joy of that movie to the, to the whole world. It makes it a lot more fun and an interesting avenue of exploration. So think about that, sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right guys, so here's my setup. Now, do you like my TV? Um, this is where I, I actually record into a digital file using the capture device here, which records in 1080p, but it's upscaled, of course, from my old VHS player right here. So they're both connected to each other through the AV cables at the back, and they go directly into the capture device right here. Now the capture device is connected to the TV through the HDMI cable. All right, so if you guys wanna do this yourselves, as long as you've got a VHS player, VHS tapes obviously, and this device, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Now, for copyright purposes, I'm not gonna be able to show you a, a mainstream movie today, but the other day I was down at the op shop and I picked up this little beauty called The Wonders of Aladdin. Now, with the recent Will Smith movie that's just come out, uh, well, I figured this would be a good time to roll this piece of junk out. I doubt anybody's gonna have any issues with it online. It stars the best known actor you've ever heard of, Donald O'Connor, whoever that is. He certainly doesn't look like the guy on the screen here, but we'll just have a look and see What's inside this mystery box today? Gosh, I've got only one hand free here. The old 80s packaging, eh? So this is the X-Files fight the future, what? No, th this can't be. X-Files, what? I paid for Aladdin. Okay, well, I guess we'll just see what's on the tape. So what I do here, guys, is I pop her in and I press the record button, which is the center button right here on the device, and instantly it'll start recording a digital file onto the uh, USB I've got connected into it. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, let's see how this works out. Okay, stepping back here. Oh, we've got to record. Yeah. Um, what's this? These are the men that attacked your camp? I don't know if this is X-Files, guys. They're yours. Or Aladdin. You do with them. What you will. Okay, so I don't know what this junk is. If you guys could tell me, please do. But right now, it's recording directly onto the USB. Um, I'll just pause it for a sec. Uh, unfortunately, with this method, uh, you have to record all the way through the VHS tape. So I'll do that my own time, guys, and I'll see you in the editing room. Okay guys, so moving on to the editing part of this video and here's where the restoration process begins.
This might get a little bit technical along the way, but if you guys want to follow along at home, you're going to need a really, really good editing program. And for my purposes today, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro, but other programs like Sony Vegas also provide this capability. So once I've recorded the entire movie onto the USB stick, I then transfer the movie through the USB stick onto my hard drive and then import it into Adobe Premiere Pro. And as you can see here, there's the clip on the left here. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it short. I'm not going to show the entire movie, obviously. But once I got the, the video, I just transfer it into the working space here. And I'm just going to play it for 30 seconds. And I want you guys to look and see and assess for yourselves what the quality is. And, and then I'll give you some pointers as where, where I see some of the problems. So I'll just play it now and, and you guys have a look. Okay, so that's just a little introduction into the video. I won't go too far much further, but I still for the life of me can't figure out what this movie is. If you guys have seen any actors that you recognize, uh, I'm lost, to be honest. This can't be Aladdin, and it can't be X-Files, because it's, it's set, obviously, in medieval times, so I don't know. Whatever the case is, immediately from the outset, you can see in the corners here, and you can see at the bottom that there's these horribly uneven lines. Uh, at the bottom, it's static, and in this side here, it's like letterboxing, but it's so uneven. Look, it looks like it was like roughly cut. So what I do here is I introduce an effect called cropping, and what this achieves is it just gives me a tighter view of the action. And I normally do this in most most of the time because pretty much every VHS tape comes with that that horrible static at the bottom there. I don't know why it's got that in it, but whatever the case is, it has to be removed. It just irritates the eye, and I'm a perfectionist when it comes to giving you guys the best quality content. So what I do once I've applied the cropping effect is I go over to the effects control, and I make some subtle adjustments to the sides and the bottom there just to get them out of the frame. So on the left, I'll probably go only minor little adjustments, but maybe about 2% on the, oh, see, instantly you've got a straight line there. Uh, and then on the right, we'll maybe do the same, obviously, to make it symmetrical there. And at the bottom, well, I really want to get rid of that horrible static. So I might go maybe 3% for that. Boom, there you go. But you don't want to have these bars for the, the whole movie. So what I do now is I just double click on the screen itself and I just drag it and expand it so that, I think that's perfect, yeah. Just so there's nothing impeding the action, we'll call it. So now, if you have a look, let's get out of that. Now you can tell that there's there's no issues, basically. This is could be passed as a DVD, really. But the one thing that does let it down is the colouring. Now, if you look at that shot right there, the colours don't look quite right. It's almost like there's a burned-in brightness there. Uh, so there's there's lacking of, of contrast between the the greens of the grass, the lighter greens and the and the browns of the wood and the and the, the the dark greens of the of the forest behind the this uh, fort here, and the sky, which is barely you can barely tell it's a blue sky. So what I do here is I add more of a cinematic effect, and to do that, I add an adjustment layer to achieve my aim. So I just put that there, and then I drag the adjustment layer onto the clip. Obviously, here I expand it for the entirety of the video. And now, what I do is I move over to the, let's double click that, color 
Now, this is where I can make the greatest level of adjustment in the quality and really give it a better sheen. So what I do here is I might move over to the Creative tab and I'll add a camera effect here. I might go with, oh, that's even worse, isn't it? That will make too many, mm, that's a little bit better actually. Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I won't do anything for that for now. But what I will do is I'll just play around with these settings here for sharp and vibrant saturation just to get the color scheme looking more realistic. So with sharpen, sharpen basically removes blurriness. It clarifies and defines borders. So what I'll do here is I'll just make a minor adjustment. You don't want to make any major adjustments because it'll just look bizarre. Just a slight adjustment there and maybe a little bit more vibrance. It needs a little bit more color to, to pop off the screen. And it's start, you're starting to see a little bit more differentiation between the, the greens and the browns now. And in terms of saturation, I'll probably do just a minor addition there. There, that, that's, that's pretty good actually. Now the green's really starting to show up. Uh, and for the tint, I like to add a little bit more green effect there, greeny blues, because you want to see the... The, the sky and you want to see obviously the uh, the greenery of the outdoors so I might put a bit of greeny blue so the sky kind of stands out a little bit more boldly in the background there okay, I think that probably would do it and maybe a little bit more to the blue I think how about that oh right, let's go with that and for the basic correction now in this tab I might just cool it down a bit because it's a little bit bit glary. So what I'll do here is I'll just reduce the temperature to make it a little bit more cooler looking. So if I if I make it brighter, it comes out even worse. But if I just drop it to a minus 35, boom, there you go. Now you can actually see the blue in the background. And it's got that sort of uh, gloomy atmosphere to it now so I probably won't touch any more here the final step I usually do if it needs it is just to add uh, balancing a bit more color balancing here so I'll just do a slight adjustment up and down so it makes it a little bit too dark there so just slightly bring that in just slight alterations nothing too drastic Okay, there we are. All right, so I'll play it from the beginning again and tell me how the quality is now, and then I'll compare the two. All right, let's have a look. So as you can see, the colors are more vivid now. The sky is more prominent. The greens are more prominent. Just skip into it. See, so have a look at this picture now. You've got the dead grass with that soldiers running towards the, you know, the, the attacking army. And you can see the background trees and everything. Now, if I take the adjustment layer off, this will remove all the effects. Have a look at the difference. It's almost night and day, isn't it? Right there, it looks horribly washed out. It doesn't even look realistic. But based on my judgments, just my minor changes, instantly there, you've got a big difference in quality. So for each movie, every movie is individual, and I make slight alterations based on how I view whatever's going on. This is actually pretty good quality in my view. I've had much worse before. But once I've finished the project and I've done all my adjustments, I head over to Export Media, and I just adjust the quality. I want to export it with so normally I'll go with a high quality 720 or 1080p which is you know full HD obviously and I render it in maximum quality once I've done that it goes straight onto YouTube and then uh, you guys get to see it well that's it folks I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it really educational because I had a super fun time making it if you wish to support this channel, please feel free to follow the links in the description of this video to my PayPal donations page or even join me on Patreon. Every dollar I receive goes straight back into the channel and it helps me source these rare movies that I can share with you.
And just before I go, if you're new to this channel and like watching my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss my newest videos. But for everybody else, get excited because my 50th quick review is coming up and I've got something very big planned. What movie will it be? Hmm. Find out tomorrow. And this is Holy Critic, signing out.